Good afternoon. Um, this presentation concerns some ideas and suggestions about data management systems and second generation analysis with archaeological legacy data. And the purpose of this presentation is to highlight the rising importance of NoSQL databases, which is, uh, in our opinion, it's an important field to explore, not only because it's involved into the management of large quantities of very different data, but also because it follows the logic of the semantic web and the linked um, open data. And this paper is co-authored with Dr. Simone Bonzano from the University of Berlin, who directly uh, run the Neo4j um, NoSQL graph database. So please excuse me for reading this presentation, but I would like to keep uh, the discourse as complex as we developed it together. So archaeological data are what economists call a no revolus good. It can be processed again and again with no diminishing of its value. And there is no doubt that archaeology is going digital, as visibly demonstrated by the proliferation of surveys and excavations over time. This process, coupled with the broad embracement of digitalization, has exponentially increased the amount of data at our disposal. Nevertheless, instead of keeping isolated data silos, one of the current challenges is the aggregation and correlation of data in the big data 3D perspective, so high volume, high velocity, and high variety. High variety of data means multidisciplinarity, and this, in this perspective, archaeology is proving to be an excellent testing ground because it has a long-standing tradition of multidisciplinarity, which is based on the integrative exploration of archaeological, geological, environmental, satellite data, and so on. So in terms of methodology, big data approach appears in a certain way to be quite antithetical to the concept of sampling, as it seems to correlate all the information or informative legacies, including lower quality data that, that can provide new insights can help reach a level of granularity and detail that sampling strategies cannot assess. In terms of, um, given this heterogeneous nature of archaeological data, we must accept messiness as one of the characteristics of our archaeological inquiry. And we need to collectively rethink the data quality question, defining methodologies that can help scholars in evaluating data metrics. So in this presentation today, we would like to explore some methodological issues of the big data archaeological approach, starting from, we hope, a soon-to-be project in the southwest of Cyprus. This project aims to be an online platform formed by a WebGIS and a WebGeo database to store, visualize, query, and analyze the archaeological and archaeologically relevant legacies from the districts of Paphos and Limassol. Following the linked open data approach, this project aims to correlate archaeological and geospatial data of heterogeneous provenience in an aggregative framework to support second generation analysis, to produce wider landscape histories, and to engage in collaborative and critical mapping practices. This area is in fact incredibly rich in archaeological legacy, which unfortunately is fragmented in a vast corpus of old reports, survey projects, casual discoveries, grey literature, research-oriented and rescue excavation that have been accumulated over time. So before to start with the description of our test study, I would like to spend a few words about the meaning of working with GIS and WebGIS in archaeology. So from the introduction of GIS into our toolbox over 20 years ago, GIS practices have acquired a widespread acceptance and provided benefits, of course. But despite its extensive diffusion, we are collectively far from the critical awareness of the challenges of a GIS-based analysis to get at the sociocultural dynamics. So the reflexive approach to GIS practices has a long-standing um, critique in geography when the post-structuralist spatial turn has challenged the reductionist ontology of analytical spatialism with issues concerning the human meaning of space. 
With the development of CGIS and a strong critique of spatial analysis by cultural geographers, GIS criticism is today a well-established field in human geography, in particular as for its relationship to issues such as ideological dominance, environmental devastation, and capitalism. The reflection on the role played by the geographer as an integral part of the geographic research finds a consistent parallel in the archaeological discourse about the neutrality, objectivity, and independence of that geologist. It follows that the GIS critique in archaeology has been focusing for a long time on the controversy objective, subjective, or on the risk of a GIS-driven environmental determinism. But in our opinion, one of the challenges we have in front of us is to engage with practices of hybrid archaeology, aiming to cross the boundary between the geospatial and quantitative technologies and the qualitative understanding of the lived experiences of individuals and communities in past societies. So how can we reconcile the scientific, scientific characteristic of spatial analysis with the embodied practices of qualitative archaeology? How it's possible to acknowledge past realities when hearing, tasting, smelling, touching and feeling very likely counted as much as moving and seeing two of the favorite elements in uh, spatial analysis. As, as noted by Quan, it's actually a false problem, as epistemology and method are only apparently linked by a one-to-one -one relation. There can be a non-positivistic use of quantitative GIS-based spatial analysis and vice versa. Interestingly, geographers developed the notion of hybrid geographies intended as the geographical practices that challenge the boundary and forge creative connections between social, cultural, and spatial analytical geography. So in line with this idea, we suggest to think about new ways to explore hybrid archaeological methodologies, where GIS techniques has to act in concert with other methods in order to explore the several narratives of past societies. So we made this introduction remark because in our opinion, semantic web, linked open data, and NoSQL databases can act as the perfect link between the second and the third wave in the development of digital archaeology. If the second wave was generally qualitative, interpretive, exper experiential, and emotive in character, this third wave needs us to examine the ways in which digital technologies may have changed what we do and how we do it. So commonly, SQL relational databases are built on a certain oversimplification of the human mind, which is reduced to you know, a binary system based on the standardized sets of columns and rows, where data needs to be preliminary structure and grouped, grouped in schemata. Data organization passes through the schematization and abstractions of the informative assemblage, where data complexity is deconstructed and reconstructed. No SQL database management systems are built upon a different concept which aims to save the complexity of data without oversimplifying the complexity of the human mind and of the archaeological record. So it permits, in fact, to storage and structure data across multiple nodes without organizing it into schemata and fixed tables. Nodes are networked through semantic links, which is the way linked open data works. These horizontal scaling mechanisms permit us to accelerate the general workflow and to handle large quantities of heterogeneous archaeological data. So NoSQL use different data storing strategies. We, have, we do have document databases where meaningful data are stored as text files that include heterogeneous sets of information. We do have graph databases where data are split into different kinds of information, nodes, and relationships, and both are defined by properties and by levels. So relations in a graph database are different from the SQL type of relations because they are meaningful data, not just properties. And then hybrid database that use a complex synergy of relationships, nodes, and documents. So for this test that we have used Neo4j, which is a graph NoSQL database that can be easily used on web browser. So in order to compare the traditional no, um, SQL and NoSQL databases, we have selected a subset of the southwest of Cyprus, which is the Zuzas Valley, where signs of human presence are documented at least from the Neolithic period. So in order to test the integrity views of the two types of database management systems, we first collected all the published records about surveys and excavations, and then we made a selection of the Bronze Age sites, because 
this is the archaeological historical period we're more familiar with. So the challenge was, let's see how much the same legacy data set can provide different and possible new insights when datafied, aggregated, and correlated. So the SQL database was structured according to the traditional framework based on related tables using columns and rows. Each site recorded by surveys excavations was cataloged on the base on what reports and publication mentioned. And all the available data sets have, have been grouped through a set of complex relations in different thematic sections. To make a solid comparison between the two database management systems, we use the same categories in the Neo4j database. So each one has been stored in a different node, and each node can be created with additional information through further properties. For example, we constructed an lecture of multiple relationships, including all the typologies of data that an archaeologist could be interested in. Attribute 2, for example, describes the chronological period of occupation, and found in indicates the ceramic assemblage discovered on one side. So just to make these pictures understandable, the picture on the right depicts the database structure, the green dots, every dot is a node. Are the sites number, purple and yellow are the names of the closest modern village and the locality. The red dots are the different pottery wares and pinkish dots are the chronological periods. So to determine our very first query, um, we queried the local ceramic assemblage belonging to the end of the Middle Bronze Age and the very beginning of the Late Bronze Age, which in Cyprus is a period of intense transformation in the settlement pattern and the socio-economic interaction and the material culture as well. So when queried the SQL database in order to get an idea about the most common ceramics were stated to this period and documented in the Zuzas Valley, we spot the very interesting co-occurrence of two wares, Polish blue core and red Polish blue core, together at some sites. And we focus on these two ware because Polish blue core belongs to the ceramic tradition of the West and dates to the early and middle Bronze Age. And red Polish blue core represents the Easter tradition. It's, it's exemplified by its name, Episcopi Fane Romani, which is a site in the Southeast. And it's dated to the end of the Middle Bronze Age. So to better visualize the occurrences of these two wares, we made a very, very simple select from ware query, something well known for archaeologists, and the outcome is what you see in these pictures. So five sites displayed the presence of both the wares, one of only one ware and three of the other one. And the geographic locations of these sites is quite interesting because uh, uh, in terms of uh, the interregional trade network, both the West and the East ceramic tradition reach not only the lower valley of the Azusas, but also the upper valley of the river, which probably acted as a cultural touchdown zone in the site. So we performed the same test with Neo4j. We use a very simple querying using both nodes and relationship. And the imaging on the left is the automatic outcome of the query. So the program created a nuclear graph, first filling the center of the graph with the two queried chronological period, and then organizing the information around it in, the, in a meaningful way. The image allows us not only to see the existing relationship between the two historical periods, but also it allows the complex interconnections among sites, chronological periods, and ceramic typologies. We must emphasize that the main difference among the SQL and the NoSQL approach is self-evident. Queries performed in Neo4j and Cypher do not request the user to rescript the analysis to predefined typologies of results. Instead of pre-imagining the result in our mind, uh, we can actually ask the software itself to produce data. So for example, here, uh, the Middle Bronze Age pottery wares are grouped, as well as the um, pottery wares belonging to the end of the period. We do have sites um, with uh, the same chronology and the same ceramic distribution in one group, and sites belonging to another period in another part. We performed a second query just to spot the connection between material culture and uh, the function of the sites, and we spot this phenomenon, so farmstead wasn't as connect connected with these two ceramic ware as the other typologies of sites. So to conclude my presentation, 
um, this very preliminary test that we hope to continue in the next month aims to suggest new ways for exploring semantic and functional data mining, mining strategies. The research potential of this integrative combination of methodologies is particularly compelling, especially because NoSQL uh, graph databases enhance visual function and provide an expected association in an immediate and particularly explicit way. The main aim of this test is to invite the archaeological community to experiment innovative strategies to reuse old archaeological legacy data, exploring the theoretical implication and the methodological novelty. Thanks. <laughs>